Yeah, uh, thank you uh, for that introduction. Um, I'm Stefan Kruger, um, and uh, I'm going to try and show you today how APL can be a good tool in the field of bioinformatics or computational genomics. Um, and it's a totally new field to me, really, um, I hate to add. Um, let's see where he gets us. Um, if you haven't come across me before, I've sort of dabbled in array languages uh, for a while, and, then, and mostly by kind of accident, I ended up writing down my experiences and um, you know, learn APL that Richard kind of highlighted it was kind of my own learning journey and uh, collated notes, if you like. And since then, I've compiled Adam's um, uh, cultivation sessions into uh, a bit of a book. Um, and also written a bit about the K language. Um, you know, check, 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 check them out and let me know what you think if you get a chance. But this talk is about APL in the field of bioinformatics. And, and let me stress again that I'm no biologist. Um, I only really discovered this fascinating field by the annual dialogue problem competition. Um, these problems tend to occur there on a, on a, on a regular basis. Uh, you know, here's one example, the, the, the 2017. Um, and actually hot off the press, the, two, the 22 edition, which just, just launched, yeah, it's got a, a couple of these as well. So, you know, maybe some hints uh, in there. Um, but in, the, in this, um, 2017 one, yeah, you can see that that it has this KMERS concept that, that I, I stole the name um, uh, for, for this talk from. And also there was actually three bioinformatics problems on, on, uh, on, this, uh, on this edition. Yeah. So what is bioinformatics? Well, Wikipedia says the following, uh, it's a computational statistical analysis to decipher biology from genome sequences related data, including both DNA and RNA sequences, as well as other post-genomic data, whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, but to us, really, you know, like a DNA string is really just another vector, yeah? and, and as such, really, it's a kind of rich theme to mine if you happen to be interested in exploring APL as a tool for problem solving. Um, and as an added bonus, you'll definitely learn some biology too, even if you don't know your KMERS from your splice motifs. These Bioinformatics problems that occasionally appear in dialogue competitions are borrowed from or at least inspired by uh, something called Project Rosalind. Uh, this is like a sprawling problem, problem collection in, in this field. And here's my current home screen at, at Rosalind showing in green text some of the problems that I managed to solve so far. Note also the, you know, just to the right of center there, the correct ratio colored bar. It gives a sort of broad indication of the difficulty of the, of the problems, especially in conjunction with the sort of middle blue column there, the solved by, which is just basically a counter of how many people have managed to solve uh, each problem successfully. Um, you can find it on rosalind.info and the kind of the way that it works is that um, you, you pick a problem and the, the, some of them are gated a little bit but, but um, you get a kind of randomized um, sort of data set you apply your solution in a, in a kind of language of your choice and then you can upload your, your results and you get like a thumbs up or a thumbs down like it's a cor cor correct correctness check. Um, now, some of these problems are actually proper, proper hard. Um, so it's worth, as, as, as you start out, especially if, if you're learning APL uh, through this, uh, um, you know, to start off from you know, fa fa favoring the ones that have a, a solution ratio in green um, gives you sort of nice on-ramp uh, to, to pick it up. Um, and, you know, some of these problems also require a kind of significant compute investment. Um, and, there's a five minute hard kind of cutoff and that includes both the time it takes to download the, the, um, the data set and, and, and upload the results. So today my aim is to, to show, try and show some, some APL code that's, that's sort of both, you know, you know clear and, and, and obvious, uh, I guess, without any, any, any trickery. Um, um, but if there's ever sort of a, 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 an opposition between clarity and efficiency, I will favor clarity. Um, now, squeezing top performance out of, out of dialogue, uh, in, in, in my opinion at least, is a little bit of a kind of dark art that, that doesn't come naturally immediately, I think. That, um, um, so I'll try and highlight how some of these kind of different approaches compare in terms of efficiency. So the way, the, the, the way I'm and visiting this is like you, you, you try a few uh, a few ones and and and, and then you see how they, how they compare perhaps so now the actual performance that, that, that you get doesn't only depend on your code obviously writing good code helps um but um but also you know the the, the version of your your dialogue interpreter and and, and, and the process features and all those matter and i'm on i'm i'm on the the, the last 
18.2 beta in the end of a chance to update to the uh, proper one yet. Um, and I'm on a sort of aging, um, low spec Mac uh, for, for, for this presentation. So, but why don't we try and solve a, a, few, a few of these kind of problems and to start with this problem six from, from, from the dialogue 2017 competition and then move on perhaps if you have time to a couple of actual Rosalind problems. Um, now we're asked in this in this problem we're asked to sort of find these k um, of a string for for a given size and and, and actually you know, if we strip out the, the biology uh, terminology a k is basically just a substring of, of a fixed length that you sort of slide along the the, the, the string one, one, one step at a time like, that, like that, this yeah so we're looking for all possible substrings of length k um, now the eagle eye amongst you might may have spotted the uh, the, the comments in the example um, uh, that says you know, if, if k, which is the we know is greater than the length, you know, we should put an end vector. I'm just going to going to skip that. Um, it, it doesn't really affect the, the competition that that, that 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 we're going to do here. And for all these approaches that I'm going to show, it will all be the same. Um, but but bear in mind that you can't just take what we write here and plug it into the um, dialogue uh, competition problem here, and 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 you'll you'll, you'll get you'll get an error. But so let's um, let's try this. Um, So um, we had this, this problem here. So, so we, 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 we want to find the, the, the substring of a, of, of, of a certain length. I'm just going to copy that um, little bit of DNA uh, sample data there that we can have something to use. I'm going to call that DNA, um, like so. Um, so let's think about this before, before we dive in, let's think about, um, you know, what, how we can possibly solve this? Yeah. So, so perhaps that, like this, sort of, you know, window that, that slides along um, the string. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's just one of these kind of reductions that, that like, we can do reductions in, in, a, in a windowed sense. Yeah. But perhaps that might be a, a, an approach. Yeah. Or maybe, um, you know, a, as you've sort of dug around the the, um, the language bar, maybe you come across stencil that lives up here. Which is essentially is is a, is, a, is by its definition is a, is a way of taking a, a kind of function operand and, and applying that over, over regions in, in, in a way in some way that maybe we can maybe we can use that, or perhaps there's a way of what we can take like okay these windows they they must all have like you know a, a set a set of defined indices maybe we can kind of sort of calculate pre calculate that that, that that's of those sort of in, in, indexes and then then just index back into, into the screen. Right? Um, but let's start with considering this the, the concept of a of a window reduction. Um, so as, as Richard um, demonstrated a couple of the of the reductions here, we, we can we can think of a way of, of, of summing a set of numbers. Uh, as, so so again, as we were just saying, like like a reduction is, is a kind of way of, of, of injecting a function uh, in the gaps uh, in an array and then evaluating the, the, the whole thing and we get. At 21 by, by, by some of those numbers. Yeah. Now, this reduction operator has a really nice feature, um, which is that you can tell it to operate on, on subsections of, of, of this thing. So you can say, like, okay, I want to sum the pairs, and I just say, like, I'm giving the two to the left, which is, which is the, the width of, of my subsections. <laughs> you know, okay. And then I, we get the sum of the pairs. So the first element there is like one plus two, the second one is two plus three, and then three plus four, and five plus eight, et cetera. But, and actually, this gives us a nice in, really, on, on, on how, how to solve, solve this, this KMA problem. So, so instead of summing these, um, um, uh, these windows, yeah, we can just catenate them together and you know, turn them into, into, into sort of uh, uh, vectors. So we can do that with a, with a catenate reduction. Yes, yeah? so we just change the plus to a comma, and we'll kind of get the pairs. You know, like this. And in fact, this is all we need to do. Yeah, we can we can name this we can name this catenate production. We can let's call that F one and, and say that that's catenate uh, reduced first. Um, and now we should be able to say, you know, we wanted the four um, length four k we but say um, four F one DNA. And so that starts with A T C G and ends with T C G T. Uh, so if we go back to the, the problem here, we can see that. That seems to be doing the right thing according to, to that. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it's it's both simple and provided that you sort of familiar is familiar with, with, with this sort of the way that you do reductions. It, I think it's it's quite clear in in, in how it communicates our intents and what we, what we try to do. Um, now 
but perhaps you come across the stencil operator I mentioned earlier up here, yeah. and 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 you 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 may have seen it in a you know one of the sort of APL party tricks is sort of game of life and you can you know, stencil is often used as a sort of engine to 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 uh, various game of life uh, implementations and. But in, in, in essence, it's a way of, of taking a function operand and a sort of some sort of specification of a region and, and applying that function over those regions. Yeah. Um, so that sounds like it's something that, that, that we should be able to, to use here. Yeah. Stencil really comes into its own when you use sort of high, higher, higher rank uh, arrays and stuff like that. But, but it can be used on, on vectors too. And, and, it, and it's, you know, intuitively, it, it's, it's actually quite clear. We would say that, that we know that we have a function that we apply to it to a, a sort of region. And so all we need to do to the region is basically just enclose it, you know, putting putting in a box. Yeah. So we can say that the, the function operand is going to be enclose only. So that the, that the enclosing the the region essentially that we get back from stencil um, stencil um, and the region specification for a vector case is basically just the the, the size of the window. The default movement is one, which is what we want. So if you wanted a four. Um, size that uh, came as we just say say four and we kind of apply that to to the the, the DNA string. Um, so again, if you get if you sort of have, a, have an understanding of stencil, that, that that that's that's pretty clear what we're trying to do. Unfortunately, it's it's got a, a slight complication here. Um, you can see that in the in the middle bit here, yeah, we get we get the ones that we want. Yeah? But we have two extra at, 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 in the beginning of the end, and 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 they're actually padded out with, with a space. Yeah? And the, and the problem that we have here is that is that stencil thinks of its regions as um, kind of extending it around the center point there. So we have a center point, and then kind of in the vector sense, it, it extends both both sides of, of that center point. There. If it's a if we're dealing with a higher higher um, sort of rank uh, region, it, it might extend in, in in whatever the dimensions the shape uh, dictates. Right. So. We have some extra ones there, and so, so maybe we think, well, actually, that, that's 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 straightforward enough. We can just sort of drop the uh, the first uh, the first and last, and then that seems to do the right thing. But unfortunately, that's not a general solution, right? It only works for for, for, for this window size. So if we if we give this a, a window size of five instead, now we have two extra extra ones on each side. Yeah. So you know, this smart idea of ours of going with stencil perhaps is now starting to look a little bit complicated. Um, but let's let's let let let's go with this. Yeah. So perhaps we can think of a way of, of like giving the, the the this sort of region size that, that we can sort of work out exactly how many uh, how many ones we need to drop, and and we could probably do that actually. But but there is a better way, and and that is that <clears throat> stencil actually knows the size of its overlap. Yeah. So this operand function here, we're treating that as a monad um, monadic function, but it's actually ambivalent. It takes it takes a uh, a left argument as well, which is actually the, the sort of magnitude of the overlap. Like, um, so if I just tap that out, um, I'll get back um, a nice little you know, two column matrix where the first matrix, uh, the, the first column is basically the uh, the amount of overlap uh, and the second one is, is, is the data. Yeah? So we can see that the ones that we do want here is, are the ones in the middle here, the ones that have an, uh, an overlap of zero. Yeah? So there's several ways that we can do this. Yeah, we, we, can, we, can, we can find out where the, this first column is equal to zero. We can use that to compress the, 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 the data column to get to get, um, to get the data. Yeah. So um, let's try that. We can write the function to do that. Um, oh, sorry. F2. So we're going to call this F2. And I'm going to try and be as, as, as Obvious as we can here. So, so we're going to need this expression that we have here. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, this one here becomes the right argument. This is the vector, and, and the, the window size there is the, the left argument. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is I want to try and unpack this two diamond and um, this this two column matrix into like two separate vectors instead. Yeah. Um, so we we need we need to transpose it, um, and then we're going to have to. Split it, yeah. So get get into into into, into vectors like like that, and then we're going to name those. We've got the first one overlap, and the second one data, perhaps. Yeah. Then we need to find out where is the overlap zero, and uh, we can do that simply with equality. So overlap is equal to zero, yeah? and then we want to compress um, the data uh, based on that. Basically, just says just pick the ones where this is equal to one. Yeah? So 
where overlap is zero is, is, a, is a, 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 a Boolean matrix with one square happen to be zero. So we can say data compress and we need to then flip it around to avoid this um, uh, extra set of brackets. Um, so if we say that, we should be able to say um, for F2, D, yeah, and hopefully it works for five as well without being extra, yeah. Ooh, right, that you know that seems to do the do do what we wanted, but it was a, a, a sort of roundabout way to get there, and it's certainly more complicated than this one that we had originally, right? The the the, the capital collection. Um, but okay, we got there. Um, let's let's leave it and let's think of the the, the third version that, that, that we mentioned earlier. Um, so let's let's think about the the indices of these windows. Yeah. So. Um, but there are windows and then the DNA uh, string that looks like this. Yeah. So the first one, the first, the first window, well, it starts at one in, in my case here, yeah, and then it's sort of offset for, for a window size of four, it has an offset of north one, two, and three, right? That should give us the first window. Yeah. The next one, well, we just move the window on by one. <clears throat> and three, etc. You, you, you kind of see a pattern emerging. Yeah. And this is one of those sort of uh, APL staples that crop up, up, crop up all the time, yeah? and, and Richard uh, mentioned them as well. So the, this is a, a relationship that can be expressed as an outer product. Yeah? So we can say that this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's going to be the sum outer product of not one, two, three. Yeah? So that gives us the, the, the sort of indices of all, all these sliding windows um, for, for the, the size four case, right? Now we can use this directly to index into this, uh, which is one of the nice features with, with APL and um, split that as well to give it back. Back to, uh, we, we just get get exactly the um, and and these these two vectors that we have here, yeah, I mean that basically just runs some numbers, you know, and uh, there's you know two slight complications. Now one one of them starts at zero and one of them starts at one, um, and then the, the the kind of position vector, the the original one, the the the, the, the first one here. Um, it doesn't run to the end of, of the of the string. It needs to kind of stop one window in, so that then when we add the last the, the last offset, that we get we get to the end. But but that's that's not that's not a huge um, huge problem to 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 tweak to get this in, into a function. And um, we can basically um, I think for F three um, we can we can write this back. so. So we use this index generator function um, that basically just gives us uh, stretches of numbers. Yeah? And then since I'm on, on index origin one, I need to subtract one so that the first one starts at zero. And then we have the, uh, the sum out of product. And then again, the index uh, generated function to the length of the, of, of the string, but we need to subtract uh, the, the window size to make sure that, that, that we don't run over the edge. And then we just index into the argument and split it to, to, get, to get a vector back here. Three. So that seems to work. So now we have three different versions of this, like F1 to F3. So let's see how they, uh, how they perform. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to generate a, a, a slightly longer bit of uh, random uh, DNA, 10,000 bases, and pick the random. Um, and then I'm going to use this uh, CMPX function. It, it's a uh, part of the defense workspace. Uh, it's, it's a way of comparing e execution times of, of functions. So, so I'm going to run these three functions on the same bit of uh, bit of uh, data um, with the, the with a window size of four. And then what this will do, it will sort of run these three things. It will measure the execution times and kind of lay it out as a um, so in a in a in a bar graph to um, give something to, to look at. So there we go. Okay, so I think the first thing that we, that we can see is that we have a large performance spread, you know, seven thousand percent or whatever it is actually. Um, so there's like two two orders of magnitude uh, uh, that we can see from from, from the execution time. So, yeah. so stencil, and then we probably should have suspected this. Yeah, stencil isn't competitive uh, competitive here, um, and there are several several reasons for that. You know, the, the first one is that actually stencil, as I said, comes into its own. Uh, mainly working on, on sort of more, more complex uh, data sets. So it does a lot of sort of bookkeeping uh, that is actually of no benefit for us in, in this simple case. Um, 
And also there was this, this um, stuff that we had to deal with, with the, with the OLAPs on each side and then and compressing and, and, and um, allocating new um, uh, sorts of arrays and, and, and stuff like that, which isn't for free either. Um, so that's the reason why it's a bit slow. Yeah. But, you know, when you have that, and when you have this, this sort of big, um, um, big spread, and uh, it's impossible to compare the two faster ones, yeah, because of the you know the, the distortion of this, this large large one we have here yeah, in the middle. So so I'm just going to drop that one out and, and rerun it, and we can see uh, a little bit closer. So we'll go through the same thing again. Um, but as we can see here, that, 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 that the two the, the two two versions that that, that we have here, uh, just to remind you what it looks like. Are essentially equivalent as a, as a kind of rule of thumb. If you have something that you measure like this and they're within you know, 10, 50 percent, yeah, then, then the, those differences are mainly mainly uh, attributable to sort of noise and in, in, in the measurement noise in the, in the system. Anyway. So, so you can also see that they're very close, but also uh, yeah, there's quite quite small execution times. Anyway. So, what if if anything can we can I learn from this? Well, I, I think it's. You know, the, the one thing to note to, to me that stands out is that the window reduction is both intuitively understandable and it's also very efficient. Um, you know, if, if the, the, the reduction is very, is very efficient if used with um, uh, uh, an operand that, that's a built in. Um, I think with the other one, with it, with the um, uh, outer product, yeah, it, it's, it's worth, I, I wanted to show that because, because it's, a, it's such a common pattern. And, 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 and the, the, these uh, outer products and also in the product eventually. That they, that they're a core of, core of, IPL, of APL that's been around for a long time. So they're, they're also like, as we can see, um, efficient in, in, in the implementation and the time too. Now, the stencil wasn't wasn't able to compete, but you know, don't write it off. It's, it's useful for, for for other things. So you'll, 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 you'll get back to it. Now there are many rustling problems involving these sort of KMOs, and, and at least now you know, um, you know what what they are and, and, and how to make them. Um, so with that, I'm going to try and move on to an another one. Um, so I think I'm going to try this one here that's called computing GC content. Um, now, the first thing to note here on, on is that is that this, this number here is a sold by 25,494 people. Um, now that's in, in Rosalind term, that's a very large number. So I think we, we, we can assume that, that this is going to be a sort of entry level um, um, entry level problem. Um, now the the, um, the interesting thing here is, is that this problem or, or a kind of version of it uh, was actually you know the first problem in, in last year's competition. Um, it's, it's slightly cut down, but essentially um, it, it's it's the same the same competition that, that, that we're going to explore. So what we're doing here is that like a, a, a DNA string. Uh, DNA uh, consists of four letters, A, C, G, T. Yeah? Um, and a way of, of uh, comparing the similarity of, of, of um, uh, different DNA, uh, DNA's uh, fragments is to look at the GC um, uh, so, sort of uh, uh, ratio. Of, uh, so, so how many of, of, of uh, what percentage of, 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 all, of all these Basis are, are actually G or C. Yeah? Um, now, there's another aspect to this to this um, this actual problem. Um, we're given a, a whole bunch of them in in a, in a file, and, and 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 part of it is learning how to parse this this file format called FASTA, F A S T. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing magic to it. It's got, it consists of a set of labels. Um, it starts with a sort of uh, greater than separator, and then that's the, like uh, everything between the labels is, is, is the string itself. You need to sort of put the, put the, put the, the lines together. Um, now, I'm going to take that as a given. I've written a, a function to do that. I'll show, I'll show it to you, but I'm, I'm just going to sort of go into how it works. But um, I'm going to focus on the actual com com computational side uh, of this. Yeah. So, um, so let's just. Um, Get back to the session. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the last of the, the strings here. This this one here. Um, this basically is going to be my example string for for, for this. Um, so we need to figure out where in the string are the C's and the G's. And yeah, you know, so so what locations where where this is equal to C or G. And so 
There are several ways that we can do that, but per, per, perhaps the one that stands out the most is, well, we can use equality, right? We can say DNA is equal to C, um, and that should give us a, a, a Boolean matrix. Essentially, it's, it's asking these, the, the, hands up everyone who's a C, right? Um, and we can do the same with the GE process, right? And this is one of the things that, that can be expressed as one of these um, uh, outer products. Again. So we can say CG um, is the quality outer product with the DNA string. Okay? That gives us two rows. Um, the first one can, um, uh, corresponds to the Cs and the second one corresponds to the Gs. Yeah? We need to find the kind of ratio here. That, so, so we need to kind of sum these up. Um, and we don't care which one's which as well. We need to, we can, we can ravel it, um, which, which basically just to put, puts all the elements in, 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 in a single vector. And then what we need to do, we need to sum them. And we know how to sum that. That's a, 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 a plus reduction. So we have 53 Gs or Cs. Um, and we need to divide it by the length of the DNA string. That gives us like uh, a ratio between 0 and 1. And then we need to turn that into a percentage of 100. Yeah? So 60.9195, and if we go back to here, um, it's actually you know, the, the, the result we wanted. Then, yeah? um, so that's, that's, that's kind of nice, and then an application of those um, outer products. Yeah. So let's just turn this into a fun function. All we need to do is just change the, those DNAs to the uh, rightmost uh, argument. Yeah. So now we can say F1 DNA. Cool. Now, in the... Um, In this one here, in, in, in the um, uh, dialogue competition version of, the, of this, yeah, it, it gives us a hint saying that the membership function could be helpful for each problem. And indeed it can. Um, so let, let's look at if we can use the, the, the membership function um, to, to do this instead. So we can say DNA um, membership uh, CG. So that gives us a, a vector. Uh, and this vector is actually equal to this outer product uh, matrix if you sort of or it um, together along the first axis. Um, um, so that saves us a little bit there. We still need to sum it. Um, and we still need to divide it by the length of the DNA. A lot of this is going to be uh, similar, right? And then 100 uh, times that to get it into a percentage. Um, we can call that F2. Um, and then we just. Uh, yeah. F2. Okay, have we got any other, other ideas that we can do this? Yeah. Well, how about we treat this as a set? Yeah. So, or a multi set, if you want to be pedantic about it. But we can say, actually, what we're looking for is that, is that the ratio of the G's and C's. So, if we rip out everything who isn't, that, that isn't a G or a C, um, we should be able to just compare the lengths. Yeah. So, we can say DNA without anything that isn't a G uh, or a C, which is going to be an A or a T, and that just gives us a long line of the, of the C's and G's, right? Um, now, how many of that was that? Now we have 53, we need that. Um, so then we just need to divide that by, oh, divide that by the length of the DNA string, yeah, and we get that familiar number, yeah? We can now say that this is going to be F3, which is 100 times in this term simple function. Uh, F3. Cool. So let's look at those. Um, we now have three. Um, I mean, obviously, they're, they're all the same in, in, in apart from the, the actual sort of uh, fi fi finding the positions there, but uh, everything else is sort of mechanics, right? Um, but let's do the same thing like we did, be, like, like, like we did before. Let's see how, how, uh, how they compare. So where did I put my long bit of DNA? Um, it's generating your 10,000 pairs um, basis, sorry. Um, so now's the time to place your bets. Yeah? Now, which one is going to be the faster of these? Um, so we run these three things again, capturing the execution times, laying it out as a, um, as a bar graph. 
So now it's easy to to you know draw quick conclusions from from, from this, right? That, that that might not be fair. You know, so, so you can say like, wow, well, one is a lot slower than the others. This is undeniably true. Um, but the execution times are also very, very small. Yeah. So I think for, for everything um, that we're going to do here, even the slowest one here will be will be fast enough. Yeah. Um, this will only matter like like if, you, if you're going to be doing like, like millions of these things. Yeah? Um, but why why is F3 slower? Well, there's a, there's a good reason for that. In, in that that the main sort of calculation in 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 F3 is the set. Uh, thing yeah? like like we we, have, we we treat the the string as a set of of, uh, of letters and then we kind of remove some and then we have to allocate the new one but we're still always in in that string domain yeah? um, whereas the other two sort of drop into uh, the the, the sort of boolean domain much much quicker which is um, sort of dialogue home turf yeah and it's easier for for, for dialogue to to vectorize. Um, um, those things are uh, working with like boolean methods, yeah. So, so that's why you have a difference. But you know, they're, they're, they're still, uh, you know, very, very, very close together. You know. um, but before we forget, yeah, we haven't actually solved this this Rosalind problem as, as it was stated yet, yeah, which was basically to to read a whole bunch of these things and then pinpoint the one that that, that uh, report on the one which has the biggest of these ratios. Yeah. So. That came down to reading this faster format. Um, I'm going to show you my function briefly. Um, now, there's nothing particularly um, magic or clever about this. Um, it, it reads a file and it puts some lines together and it, and, and it, it separates out the, um, uh, the labels and, and, and the strings into two vectors and packages that up into a namespace and, and, and returns that. Return that. So, um, just a couple of couple of lines. Uh, nothing particularly clever, but. Um, I'm going to read in the, the sort of a real competition data sets here. Um, uh, fast, uh, um, it's going to be called Rosalind underscore GC TXT. Let's see, we've got um, but we have names and strings, um, data of names. So we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six. Um, um, DNA strings. Um, and let's see how big they were. Um, so we do uh, length of each of the data got strings, 850 to 975 or so. Um, so compared to what the, the, the tests that we just just ran, um, you know, these are very short, you know, the, 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 a tenth of, 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 the, of the size uh, or less. Um, so, so any of these um, Functions that that, that that we wrote earlier will be sufficient to, to solve this problem, and you know, easily within the the, the Rosalind time frame. Right? So, what we need to do is we need to run one of our functions uh, across all of these strings, so we can capture that into uh, a variable called GC. Actually, I'm going to also print it to the screen so we can see um, F1 each of the data dot strings. So we can see that we have six values, and obviously it's only six of them. So we can eyeball them, and see that the this one here, this guy here, is is is, is the one that we're after. Then, you know? um, I can't just look for the max here um, because we want the index um, of, the, of the max value. And then the way that you do that in in APL is to pick the first element of the grade down permutation vector. Um, if you've not come across the grades before, they, they are APL's very clever way of, of, of sorting things. Um, um, basically, if you grade something down, you get a, a vector that if you use that vector to select the, the elements from, from uh, um, your, your, your array, you get that array back in descending order. Yeah? So that means that the first one from the grade down vector, first element will always be the index of the largest value. I think I got that one. Um, so we can say that if we uh, pick the first element of the grade down of GC, that should give us the index of the largest value. And we're gonna use that to pick from uh, 
uh, pick each data dot names and gc and we get back the well, we, all, we, we, we knew which one it was already, yeah? and we, we, but now we have some more, more kind of gen, generalized values. I mean, so we can see that the we knew that this was the fourth, um, the fourth one, one, two, three, four, and then that one is the, is, is the fourth. So with that, we've actually solved our first actual uh, Rosalind problem, and I think. The um, the thing that I've discovered from this is is that that this is a real sort of area of a, a great affinity for for, for API, and and it, it's clear that that uh, that uh, the team who who writes the problems for the uh, dialogue competitions have also discovered this, and it seems that they they cover up on a regular basis. And actually, I, I've enjoyed thoroughly uh, um, using APL at, 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 at solving these these kind of problems, and uh, and I also find that that you get some of the um, dialogue competition problems for free if, if, if you don't have it. So, um, check it out and, and, and see what you think and, and, and um, let me know what you think. I think, I think that's um, kind of me out of, out, out of time here. So I don't know, Richard, if I have any um, time left for questions, I'm happy to um, answer those or we can uh, um, have a good time to chat. Thank you very much.